everybody, welcome to the Pop Punk Nerd Show, I'm your host, the Pop Punk Nerd, where we talk about music, video games, movies, anything pop culture related. Today, I'm doing a new se- segment here on the podcast, um, I, I want to do a title called, We Got Music Friends, and basically what I want to do is like inter- bring up musicians and all that, and basically interview them, get to know them, and sh- show you guys what they what the inspires them to make music and all that. So, our first special guest actually is... um. From Canadian pop punk band, Minority 905. Please welcome, John. Hello. What's good, everybody? How are you doing today, John? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, why don't you give it like a brief like little summary about you and your band? Uh, yeah, so we're a pop punk band from uh, Mississauga, Ontario in Canada. We've been playing for about seven years. Um, I'm the singer and uh, main songwriter for the band. Uh, we've been doing uh, YouTube for about, I'd say, five years. And yeah, we've been uploading covers there and our original music, hoping to get our original music heard. So yeah. Nice. So like, like when when did this all start? Like, at the beginning? Like, let's take it back to the beginning. Like, like tell us the story how the band was formed. All the way back to the beginning, before YouTube days? Uh, yeah, let's do it before YouTube days. <laughs> okay, yeah, so uh, I was coming out of high school. I just graduated grade 12, so this was back in 2013. Um, I was just getting into pop punk and um, just like that sort of music. Uh, so I was listening to a lot of Green Day, you know, like the classic stuff, like Green Day, Blink-182 and all that. Um, and then I wanted to make a band. Because I, I wanted to write songs and sing. So I made an ad on Kijiji, which is like the Canadian version of Craigslist. And uh, I found a few people to play with. And then we started a band. And yeah, that's how it started. Actually, like the the first members that we have are like aren't here anymore. So we've had a few members over the years. But um, what you guys know on YouTube, like it's been mostly the same. So but you're before like, that, we had a couple before. So you're basically like the longest members at of, of the band. Uh yeah, I am. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. And um, like you were saying, like Green Day and Blink were some of your inspirations. Like, I was saying, like from what I've heard, has definitely, I definitely hear that Green Day style in you, in your guys' stuff. Like, what other bands and not only pop punk, but like any other artists that have inspired you guys. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the other artists, well, mostly I would say when I first started, um, this was back when I was like three years old, like my favorite artist was Michael Jackson. And then around that time in 2013, uh, when I first started the band, Green Day was a big one, of course, but um, Taylor Swift was also a really big one. And uh, she's still a really big inspiration to me now. Uh, I probably listen to her music a little bit more. Um Later on, uh, All Time Low was another one. Yellow Card was also a really big one. So this is, I'm talking um, earlier days, but these days, like All Time Low is still a really big influence for me and uh, Taylor Swift too. Nice. So you kind of like got like inspired. You you sound like you have like a huge like library for, to go off of instead of just pop punk, which is pretty interesting that... A lot of, like, I definitely, like, from the music I've heard, you have definitely have, like, that variety. Like, you can, you can expand variety, especially when you, like, when you do pop covers and pop punk styles. But, like, you know how to make it sound, like, pretty catchy. Yeah, I think, like, pop and pop punk, like, they have a lot of similarities. Especially, like, uh, structure-wise. Like, if I listen to a lot of the early Taylor Swift stuff, I know, like, if I just turn up, if I put, like, guitars on this, like... It's gonna sound like pretty pop punk. I feel like a lot of the, like the early two thousands, uh, mid two thousands music, uh, pop music in general, like they could translate really well into like that pop punk style. So it's not it's not very hard to, uh, kind of like make a rendition of it. Right. Yeah, I definitely. Th- yeah, yeah, I believe it's possible. Like, it's definitely easy for like pop songs, especially especially in the mid two thousands, to definitely get like that whole pop punk treatment. And all, um, obviously, like you do mostly covers. Like, how long did it start for you guys? And like, when you guys started, at least got 
comfortable to like start making original music uh well like when we first started the band we already were making original music so the whole time so the band was together maybe like two years before we started doing youtube like we were making original music that entire time and um most of the shows that we were playing we were trying to play uh, i would say at least once a month locally uh we were playing original songs there and um I think we were just having trouble kind of gaining traction and kind of getting people to notice us. Sometimes like, you know, like when we played a show, we would kind of be in the beginning and there'd be like not really that many people there to see us. So uh, I decided to try and do uh, YouTube. I discovered a couple of good artists on YouTube that were like, uh, for for example, like one of my favorite artists from that I discovered from YouTube is um, Tori Kelly. And the way I found her was I, I saw her PYT cover, um, that Michael Jackson song. Right. And so I kind of just took that like mentality. Okay. Maybe like if I start putting up covers on YouTube, I could like draw in people and then, um, show them my original music. Cause like at the end of the day, like that's what I'm trying to do, uh, try to get the original music heard. I don't want to be like considered, um, as a cover artist, which is kind of a little bit of the drawback, like with YouTube kind of people kind of see you as more of a cover artist, but yeah, like it ha- it has worked. We've gotten more people to notice our original music. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Right. Like when I first when I first discovered you guys, yeah, I was mostly listening to listening to your guys' covers, which are pretty good and stuff. And then like when I saw that you guys started having like original stuff, I found it on Spotify. I'm like, wow, this is really good. Like your hit hit and run is actually pretty catchy. Like I catch myself listening to that every now and then, like in oh, my cool, pop punk cool. playlist. Yeah, that's like one of the the older ones too. Nice. Um, and you you guys have like how many have songs have you guys like recorded all together? Uh, so the first EP there was five songs. Well, four songs plus a bonus song, but the bonus song is also on Spotify. So let's just say five. Um, then how many did the? I think Broken Not Being has ten, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's ten songs, and then uh, the latest album Dangerous Ambitions has twelve. We released uh, another new song this year called 2020 Holiday. So that's one more. And we're actually coming out with a new song uh, in a few weeks, Dancing With You, uh, on December 18th. So, yeah, quite a few songs. You hear that, listeners. They'll be playing their new song on December 18th. So this video will be probably uploaded by the time, right before the, the their debut song. So make sure to look out for that. We'll have their na- We'll have their band link in the description below. Um, oh yeah perfect timing there right. the music video is also coming up the, the next day too i mean this is the same day it's coming up so do you usually prefer uh, so um do you usually like rep- for like prefer doing live shows or youtube like what do you do more often like to balance it out and like how has how has like obviously with 2020 not a lot of live shows and all that how's that affected your guys's band uh yeah, so for a long time, we, we were trying to balance uh, both of them. Uh, I think more recently, I, I tried to, um, I want to do YouTube more uh, just because like now we're growing up and there's, uh, uh, but yeah, like before, I think this year we were uploading on YouTube, let, let's say maybe like, it was kind of irregular. Like sometimes like we'd have like three videos in one month, sometimes it'd be two Sometimes it'd be one. So these days I'm trying to make it like a consistent thing where it's every week. And the reason that back then it was sort of irregular was like we needed time to practice. There'd be weeks where we'd be playing live shows and all that. Uh, So I kind of just wanted to take a little bit of a step back from the live shows a little bit more and uh, really focus on YouTube because it's like where we're doing better on YouTube right now. yeah well like not that i'm against playing live shows i think live shows is you know obviously like you can't like replicate that feeling of playing a live show uh but yeah so for this year uh i've been sort of okay like it hasn't been like too much of a bummer for me that i haven't been been able to play live because we we we're still able to upload on youtube and uh, interact with the fans were there any shows like you guys were like looking forward to playing 
live or like just shows like you guys just wanted to go just to have fun at a concert or so, anything like that this year? I think we had I think we had one show that was scheduled to happen. So instead of that happening, we just sort of did um I did um like a live stream for it. That was kind of the only show that was booked. So we didn't really miss any shows. Are you talking about like attending concerts? Uh, yeah, just a mix of both. Like if you attending concerts or just performing at shows. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for shows wise, yeah, like I was saying, we only missed one show that we were supposed to play. Uh, but for concerts, I was supposed to attend like, I think at least five concerts for sure. Oh. Or like four or something like that. Uh so earlier in the year, in January, there was supposed to be an Angels and Airwaves concert that I was supposed to go to that I was really excited about. And then it got it got postponed because Tom was sick or something like that. Um got postponed to May. So I was waiting for that. And then obviously like COVID hit around March. So then that just got straight up canceled. Uh I was also supposed to go to the TS that got canceled or postponed. That was also supposed to be in May. I was supposed to go to Halsey. Uh, I was planning to go to Boston to watch um, Taylor Swift's concert as well. I, I, like, I didn't buy the ticket yet, but uh, I was definitely planning to go to that. Um, the Green Day concert with Fall Out Boy and Weezer. I, oh, I was going to go. I was actually going to go to Pittsburgh yeah. to go see that show to meet up with a friend. But yeah. like, we were just like, uh, uh. Yeah, that sucks. And then there was also, I believe there's one more. I was supposed to go to like, uh, I don't know who who else was gonna be on the festival, but like it was gonna be headlined by All Time Low. Sad, um, is it Sad? I forgot what us? it was called. Sad Summer. Yes, yes. Yeah, Sad I was Summer. gonna go to yeah. that one too. Yeah. I was like, I'm still debating on like which place I want if I want to go to Pittsburgh or LA for it. So I'm still debating on that one. Um, I was definitely gonna go to like the. The Me- Hella Mega Tour with Green Day, Fall Out Boy, and Weezer. I was actually going to go to the San Diego one and the Pittsburgh one. I, mm-hmm. I was I was interested how the San Diego one was going to work because it was going to play during Comic Con here. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, I-, I was definitely wondering how that was going to happen, but all that got canned and stuff. Um, I was going to go to the Pop Punk's Not Dead tour with Simple Plan and Newfound Glory, but that got pushed back to next year. Yeah, yeah it, I think that's happening here too. I think that's like the day before the all-time low one or sad summer next I, year. I, I I was like my plan was for that show was go to Disneyland during the daytime and then go to, to the show at night because they're literally the venue's literally like not even that five minutes away from Disneyland. Uh, which venue is it? Uh, I think it was the House of Blues. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I know I know the House of Blues is like not that far from Disneyland. It's literally like a block away. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to House of Blues. I, I've been to Disneyland and Universal. Oh, uh, okay. Like, so, what year did you go? What year did you go to Disneyland? Uh. I know for sure I went in like 2004, but I think I might have gone one more time in 2013. Like that that's that was the last time I was in California. It was around 2013. Okay, so you, did... you you were able to like walk the downtown Disney district, okay. right? I believe so, yes. Okay, so yeah, the House of Blues was originally in the in the plaza, but it just oh, got okay. it got yeah. so overcrowded. They ended up like they switched it out to a bowling alley and they just moved the House of Blues to, like, a bigger warehouse, like, across the street. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah, it just sucks that, uh, like, yeah, dude, like, I, I'll get notifications, like, oh, here's your ticket. I'm like, oh, today was that day. Today, like, when the hell of Megatron right. happened in right. August, I was like, I would have been in Pittsburgh right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, dude. Yeah, dude, like, Everything just feels weird, and I'm like, I'm like, I seen on YouTube like the drive-in concerts and all that. I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. It's not the same. You might as well like watch it. Like, yeah, even like there, I see people like paying for live streams like online, and I'm like, like, I'm like, that's cool, yeah. 
but I'm like, it, it's not the same. It's not it's, the same. Like, dude. it's never gonna be the same. It's yeah, ne- yeah, yeah, it's never gonna be the same. And who knows when concerts are gonna happen all over again, and stuff like. Yeah, I have no idea. Ah, oh, man. So, let's try to get to know John. Um, obviously, you're a pop up. What else you like? What else are you into besides pop punk music and? Music? Uh, uh, like just pop. No, I mean like, like I think not, not, that's that's why. Oh, like, oh, what, like um, not music. Yeah, not music. Level. Like, what do you enjoy to do? Uh, yeah, I like playing video games. I like playing basketball. Uh, what do I like doing? I like watching a lot of TV, anime, all that good stuff. That's pretty much it. Wrestling too. Wrestling's a bit big for me. Nice. Um, what game have you been playing recently? Uh, I've been playing NBA 2K21 on PS5. Uh, I also played um, the Miles Morales game recently. I just finished that, but I'll probably do a second playthrough with like on the hardest difficulty. Uh, my next episode. You were in one is... of my streams, right? Yeah, I watched a few of your streams when I got when I get a chance to if I'm not working. What game was I playing? Uh, the last was time, the last, the last, the last stream I watched of yours, I think it was The Last of Us Two. Okay, yeah, yeah. So like that was like the last game I finished on PS4, bro. Like that, that game pissed me the fuck off, honestly. <laughs> uh, yeah, my next episode, literally after this one, is literally gonna be a Miles Morales review. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But did you play Last of Us Two? Yeah, I actually played Last of Us Two. Like when, first week it came out, I did. That's the whole reason why I wanted to play the. I ended up buying a PS4 earlier this year, like rebuying one, because I wanted to play uh, yeah, The Last of Us 2 also. And like, yeah, the, the main thing that like my issue was with well, my last PS4, if I played a heavy game like Red Dead, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, or Modern Warfare, yeah. my PlayStation would just overheat and shut down. Oh, okay. Couldn't handle the big games, I guess. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I definitely need a new PlayStation. So I ended up just buying it. And it weren't, runs great. Like, I had no issues with it. I love it. I just ended up just switching the hard drive so I could have more memory storage in it. Yeah. But I definitely need to get a bigger one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, how's, um, yeah, since you have the PS5, how's that running, like, games? Are you, are you only playing PS5 games or you're playing PS4 games on it also? I haven't played any PS4 games on it. So far with PS5 games, it- it's really nice. There's no um like the loading times are really fast. That's probably the best thing about it. Nice. I, I know a lot of people have been having like issues. I don't know like what issues, but they've been having uh, issues with their PS5. I I haven't really. I think like one time my my controller froze like really weird. I think that was like the only time I had an issue. But yeah. Yeah, I've heard. I heard there's been issues, but I haven't personally like. I haven't got a chance to get a PS5, but like I want one, but I'm not in a rush to go get one, kind of deal. But um, yeah, yeah. So you just have yeah. Spider Man and uh, NBA. Yeah, that's not the, that's the only game. Well, like Spider Man, like I don't even have it. Like I I borrowed it from my friend, and NBA is the only game I ha- I have. Oh, nice. But nice. it's good enough for now. I know. I'm like there's a lot of grinding involved, so like it, there's like you're not gonna run out of things to do. Yeah, I oh, I I think I have one of the NBA games on like from P- PlayStation Plus, but I never personally played them. Like I never honestly played an NBA game in my life. Oh, I've, okay. But um, I've like sp- when it comes to sports games, I'm like iffy about them. I definitely love like the old school ones, like NFL Blitz on the PS2, and like those like NBA Playground and all that. Like I I just yeah. love I I I'm more arc when it comes to sports games, I'm more arcadey than realism yeah yeah i'm like i'm like the opposite i like the the realistic stuff realistic stuff and stuff um yeah I, i'm curious because you said you're a wwe fan are yeah. you more like are you more of like realism or arcadey style for those games i guess the realism one too yeah the realism although like too. the last game was pretty bad yeah, WWE 2K20 was like pretty bad though. 2K20, oh yeah, it definitely was bad. Like my okay, like for, as a WWE fan, like I personally like the roster is actually pretty good. That's the that's what like what upsets me. It's like it's a really good roster, but uh, the gameplay is just bad. Like yeah, the gameplay is yeah, bad, and the control yeah. scheme is just like I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they changed it for last year because 
It like, played exactly I have the same. Right. Like, I have 2K19, and, like, I, I'm, I'm, like, good with that one. I think, like, I played I played 2K16 all the way to 19, and yeah. I think by far my favorite is 19. Okay, yeah. Just, just with that, just, just with that perfect roster and everything. Yeah, I feel like they're mostly, like, the same gameplay-wise. Yeah, they're all the at same. Least just... recently. Yeah, I yeah I think it's all been the same gameplay. It's just what roster you want. Like, obviously, two K sixteen has like the ad- the attitude era, and all that. And then like two twenty nineteen has more like ruthless aggression era roster and everything. So yeah. it's like it's a mix. I'm like, I grew up with more like the ruthless aggression era. Yeah, same. So I was yeah. like, I'm like, I want that more than this. Yeah, I'd rather have the ruthless aggression era uh, versus like the attitude uh, era also. Like 16? the only character is actually the one I didn't have. Like I had I had 15, 17, 18, 19, and 20, but I didn't have 16. I had yeah, I had 16 for a bit. We I got that used at a GameStop. Had it for a while. <laughs> I just didn't care for it because like the like like I said, I was a huge ruthless aggression guy. And like everybody yeah. I like was not on there. Yeah, like um the only reason I got like 2k19 it's because i'm a huge yes. fan of ray mysterio and when they finally brought him back into the games that was like more of my to go to wrestling game right i think uh yeah he came back with like the royal rumble that year right yeah why, it was like, a royal, yeah game? he came back royal rumble and he was the pre- i think he was the pre-order bonus i didn't buy yeah, the game yeah. i didn't buy right. the game day one but i did buy it when it was on sale like ha- like maybe like two months after so i was like oh, all okay. right and i just bought him individually I was like, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a huge fan of buying DLC, but I'll do it for Ray Mysterio. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't like the way they do their DLC there. I swear, like it's already in the game, right? And then they just like unlock it. It's stupid. Okay, what I find really dumb is like wrestlers that were in previous games and they resell them as DLC. Yeah, yeah that makes no sense. Yeah, I was just like, okay, for example, I yeah, I think it was in 2K19. They made badass undertaker a char- a dlc character but in every other game before that he was uh he was already unlockable yeah yeah that makes no sense i don't know why yeah and that. then it's like most of the dlc characters are like either just alternate outfits of of like the characters already in the game so i'm like what's the point yeah or like sometimes it's like nxt people yeah i mean i didn't okay i did buy the nxt pack because like there was like a yeah. Because there was, like, a few wrestlers that were on there. I was like, okay, I remember them from, like, who is it? Yeah. Like, Maria Canellis and all that. Right. I was like, okay, I remember her. I, I, like, I definitely play as the women, like, division in the game. It's I feel like it's more fun as, than before. Man. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll download because I remember her. She was a classic from then. But, yeah, mm-hmm. like, like, the Legends pack is just, like, really just alternate outfits and the only character that's on there is Roddy Piper. Yeah. I I know like this year like the DLC is even worse. It was like it was like fantasy alternate attires or something. It was Yeah, there was like, like wrestlers or... the the only good DLC pack on there was the SmackDown pack and it was just Hulk Hogan, the like old school rock, Mankind in China. Yeah. I'm like I would have been like if that game was perfect I would have just downloaded that DLC and not, and I call it for the day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was just like, uh, I don't know. Like, I wasn't a, well, I wasn't a fan of two K sixteen, seventeen. I don't know why I bought that one. I think I bought it just because it was like the debut of AJ Styles in it. Was that the first year he was on it? Yeah, seventeen. Oh, yeah, okay. seventeen. It, like that's when he debuted. Um. 18 i just didn't play 18 as much even though it had more variety for me like that's when they brought back like batista rob van dan eddie guerrero um yeah but then and then like 19 happened and i was like okay it's just literally the same roster as before the only difference is i think from 18 i think they only removed like maybe like two or three wrestlers i grew up with so like obviously jbl's not in there in 19 (laughs) but he's in the other ones yeah. Um okay, like as a wrestling fan, like who are your who are your top 5? Uh right now or or just all time? Ju- just growing up or all time. Okay, yeah. Let, um see. 
Okay, so number one would be Sean. Right. Sean Michaels. Two would be Punk. Three would be um, I say Stone Cold. Then four man, I, I don't know after that. Uh because I, I like so many of the new pe- the new guys too. Mm-hmm. Let's say like uh Ambrose or Moxley, um Rollins. So that that would be five. Alright, alright, cool. Um all time for me, like definitely Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero are definitely on my top two. Um Right. I want to say I was definitely a Randy Orton fan. Yeah. Definitely a Randy Orton fan. Definitely love AJ Styles. And yes. I want to say Kurt Angle. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you, you have a lot of um, SmackDown guys. It, I Like, yeah, for me, it was like I didn't really have much cable <laughs> growing up. So, like, yeah. the only one of the only, like, channels that we were able to grab was, had SmackDown and, like, yeah, I was definitely a SmackDown guy overall. All right. And how about how about now? Like, who's your top five now? Ah, oh, man. Okay, honestly, I'm not. Mo- I think I'm more into the women division more than the guy division. Yeah, same. Yeah. Because it just like the guy division doesn't feel the same. I feel like it's more entertaining for the chick division. Definitely Becky right. Lynch. Yeah. Um. Sasha Banks is pretty good. Yeah. Bailey. Alexa Bliss. I know I, I like I want to say Charlotte as the top five one, but yeah, we'll go we'll go with Charlotte. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sasha Banks would be my number one right now, like male or female. All right, and then um, yeah, Becky would probably be be number two, and then yeah, so. Uh, Moxley and Rollins again. Uh, and I don't know who else. Uh, who else is good? Like maybe, like maybe AJ Styles? AJ, okay, like for when it comes to the guy division, I definitely watch the AJ Styles segments mostly. It's mostly been yeah. like lately, like lately this whole year, I, I don't, I haven't been paying attention much to the shows, but I would just like l- watch like the AJ ones or Rey Mysterio or Jeff Hardy. Right, yeah, I feel like uh, they're they're running out of storylines here. Yeah, the, Man, the the Rey Mysterio storyline with Seth Rollins, bro. Oh my god, <laughs> that was so just whack. it was a drag, dude. I swear, but I it's was... but it's still going. It's, it's still, still going. going. I was just like, are you kidding me? Either way, like that Seth Rollins segment, it's not gonna be Rey's segment with with uh, Ray, Eddie Guerrero when they freaking fought for their kid. Yeah. He he's been in some whack storylines. Yeah, I, like I all of, like the like I re- I remember I was like ten years old and like that Eddie Guerrero segment. I'm like, oh my god, this is like I don't I did like discover betrayal. That was like my first <laughs> discovery of betrayal. Like even your own yeah, blood could betray real, you. For real. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching that. I'm like, oh no, Eddie betrayed Ray. Now he's taking his son away. What year was that? Was that like 2005? 2005. Oh, okay, yeah. Like I started at, I started watching like the year after. I like started watching, movie, yeah, I started movie. watching, like, so I want to kind of, like, do, like, a whole WWE segment episode later on, but I'll go in, like, yeah. a little quick brief here. Like, yeah, I started <laughs> watching it, like, maybe in 2004, mm-hmm. and, like, that was, like, no, like uh, I got introduced, and there was, like, nothing on on, res- on TV, like, since I didn't have cable, so SmackDown was on, right. like, the only people, like, my parents recognized were, like, oh, look, watch The Undertaker fight, and all that, I'm, like, Okay, yeah. that okay. So this guy's the Undertaker. Okay, he's like a good guy, and, uh, and then it comes Eddie, then Ray, then John Cena. They were like the top guys on the on on SmackDown, and then you had the bad guys like Kurt Angle, JBL, Booker T. Right. Yeah. So I was like, and I just got hooked after that, and like you say, uh, like I uh, like just put it this way, like if that. If that Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio segment was back then, that would have been more believable back then. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that definitely felt like an old school segment. I'm like, uh... Nah. Yeah, they had some pretty, like, wacky storylines back then. Uh, did you ever watch the Randy Orton-Undertaker feud? 
Not really. Like I I know about it. Like I I do know about it, but like I wasn't watching it like um when it was happening. There was like this one stupid scene where like Randy Orton's like he seen like vision. when his dad. Oh, his okay. Yeah, and it shows his dad, and his dad's like all fucking like bleeding and everything. Yeah, uh, and I'm just like, that was so corny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, man, uh, um, how'd you feel about, like, that Undertaker retirement match and all that, and the retirement the segment? One, the one with AJ Styles, or, like, the actual one they just did recently? The one with AJ Styles. Oh, man, that, that was so funny. I loved it. It was so corny, but it was a joke. It was. Like, that was, it was. definitely, it was funny. that was definitely, like, ruthless aggression attitude era style fight. I, yeah. And, <laughs> I, I, like, half of me does wish, like, it was an arena fight. But I know I would have yeah. gotten more chance. But I'm like, oh my god, this was so entertaining. I kind of glad that it, like it was with AJ Styles' his last match. Yeah, and I think like if they did like a real match, it might have been like not that great because like Undertaker can like barely wrestle anymore. Yeah, but I think like this way it was still like it was better. Oh man, yeah. How how did you feel about that retirement segment? The one in Survivor Series. Yeah. Uh, I still gotta watch it. Like I I think I missed that part. I watched. I. I mean, I only got it just to watch it. I just, like me personally. I don't want to go into spoilers, but it just felt yeah. very anticlimactic. So that was on the, in the pay per view, right? Yeah, the one on the pay per view. Oh yeah, uh, I'll watch it. I was watching the pay per view, but like not that part. Yeah, it was like right towards the end and all that. Okay, yeah. Because um, I think after after like the Sasha and Oscar match, I wasn't really paying that much attention anymore. Yeah, the the, yeah. the women division is definitely way better than it was before. Like, I, like I said, I watch like I watch more of the women division more than the guy division. Like, I remember watching one of the SmackDown episodes. Like, no, I actually went to one of the SmackDown sh- showings, and the main event was a uh, the women's yeah. Money in the Bank. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I'm, wa- the and I'm one, wa- uh, the first one when Carmella won. Yeah, when Carmella won. And they had to do the rematch on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was actually there when when that happened, and I'm like, it was like my first time watching wrestling. Like I, I started getting back into it like a year ago, but I, I didn't get right. more invested in it till like at that time. And I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, like they actually have the women doing all this, and now I see them doing like Hell in a Cell matches, TLC, Steel Cage yeah. fights. I'm like, oh my god, where was this when I was a kid? Yeah, back then it was all like bikini contest. Yeah, bikini contest and like <laughs> mud fights and all that. Bras and yeah. panties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I was just like, eh. and now like I, I like I like seeing well, the women's Royal Rumble. Those are pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, going back to like the WWE games, what was your like? What was your favorite WWE game back in the day? Uh, I'd say Here Comes the Pain Here comes on the PS2. Pain. I yeah. never personally played that one. I think I rented that one from a blockbuster, but I never yeah. like fully played it. I played Shut Your Mouth, and I played Smackdown. Okay, yeah. Shut Your Mouth is good, too. I think Here Comes the Pain is actually the first one with, with Ray in it. Pretty sure. Yeah, the, Here Comes the Pain was the first one with Ray Mysterio. Yeah. I got introduced with the first Smackdown vs. Raw game. Okay, yeah. And I played all the way to 2008, but my favorite is 2007. Yeah, 2007 is pretty good. I think 2006 I, is pretty good too. 2006 was pretty good. Um, like I just got to buying a rebuying a PS2 earlier, and I literally just got 2007. I was debating if I want to get 2006 also. I think I have both of them still. Pretty sure. I got I got um Dave Reckoning two, on GameCube. Have you ever played that? That's no, on no, GameCube. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have. I don't know if I have it, but like I I played it. Yeah. So yeah, that one that one's basically the 2006 roster. But it's like yeah. it just removes like a majority of the jobbers. Okay, yeah. <laughs> There's like maybe like five or six joggers in that one compared to like I don't know how many were there was like fifteen of them. Yeah. And like it had some of the main main hit legends. The only like ones they removed was like Andre the Giant, um, Roddy Piper. Okay, yeah. It but like it was like it, guys. It, it was a pretty good one. It had like like for like it had like the main guys like Jericho, Cena, Christian, Edge, Mysterio, the Guerreros, Benoit, Batista, Booker T, JBL, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, etc. And like the yeah. main the legends were Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, The Rock, uh, Stone Cold, and Mankind. 
Yeah, so I still pretty much had it, like, most of them. Yeah, my only issue about that game is just, like, the stamina meter. I'm like... Mm -hmm. Like, when it comes to wrestling games, like, back in the day, I prefer the arcade style more. Like, where there's no stamina? There's no stamina. Yeah. Like, I know in SmackDown vs. Raw, you were able to remove the stamina, but... Yeah, 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 but you the, can take it off, yeah. But for Day of Reckoning, at least for the second one, that's when they added the stamina, you can't remove it. So, once your stamina's down, you ha you're, like, your guy's, like, vulnerable. Like, he can't move. Like, he's, like, trying to catch his breath and all that. And I'm just like, yeah. ah. <laughs> takes away from the arcade feel, but I'm like, it's still a good game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, like, I, I love the old games. Oh yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the whole reason why I want to at least get 2006 is because of yeah, uh, it's because like that was like one of the main ones I played. I kind of want to get 2007, mm -hmm. no, not 2008 or 2010, mostly because of Jeff Hardy and um, CM Punk. But I'm debating yeah, which version yeah. do I want. <laughs> I think like one of them has the CM Punk like story in it. I think it might have been 2009. Oh, actually no, I think it is 2008. Yeah. When he's in ECW? Oh, no, 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 that was 2009, that was 2009. Oh, oh, it was 9, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2009 had, like, um... Yeah, like, the 2009 had, like, the story modes. 2008, I think it, it had a se season mode, but it was just pretty whack. Okay, yeah, like, I, I didn't really like 2008 that much, it was weird. Like, it had, like, all the, um, like, the random styles that they have. Uh, like, I, you hit I, the guy in the head. Yeah, I like the he roster... Started, like, but, like, I I'm always someone, like, okay, like, I would love to get, like, that's why I was debating on 2008 or 2010, because 2010 has, like, a stacked roster, too. Like, it has, like, Jericho, Big Show, Christian. It brings back Christian, um, has CM Punk, and Jeff Hardy, except he has, like, the face paint kind of deal. And it, right, brings, yeah. ba and it brings back The Rock. Right. So I'm oh, like, he wasn't in the other games? Uh, he got, he was in 2008, along with Steve Austin. But, uh... Right. He, he they both got removed from 2009 because i guess oh, okay. there was a tie-in game with it it was called legends of wrestlemania all oh, right yeah yeah you're right yeah. yeah and so they were on that game and you were able to transfer the smackdown versus raw roster to that game yeah yeah i, re I remember that but i heard the game wasn't that great when it came to gameplay yeah it, it wasn't like I, I think i played like a like a demo of it it was, it was basically like just like a worse version of the regular game yeah so i'm like I want a game where I want Jeff Hardy, The Rock, and all them. So I'm like, should I get 2010 or should I get 2008? <laughs> I remember like back then, um, because when did Jeff Hardy get added back? 2008, right? Yeah, 2008. Yeah. He was he was an eight, nine, and ten only. Yeah, like I remember, I used to make him all the time. Like I would go online, like I'd look up like these formulas that people had, and like people made like really good Jeff Hardy too. Like he was pretty accurate. So like, yeah, I think that's why I did yeah, it with 2007. Time. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I, I did that with 2007, and, um, because, uh, like, him and CM Punk, but, uh, like, because I definitely love the 2007 roster compared to any other game. Right. It's just missing, like, Jericho and Christian. Is CM Punk in that game in 2007? No, he no. was in 2008, right? Yeah, yeah he's in two, that, 2008 was his debut game and Jeff Hardy's return. Right. Yeah, and then they started removing, like, people like Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam, Big Show, Jericho, Benoit. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yeah, it was a lot of people. And it was also kind of like that era where it was like, I was already fading out with wrestling. Yeah. 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 Like, for me, it was like, I think I think it was a little bit after, like, the whole Benoit incident. I kind of started, like, fading away from wrestling. Right. Yeah, so I was, like, keeping distance. But I, I think I got back into it after, like, 2K14. When I saw there was, like, mm -hmm. a really good roster on that game, I'm like, all right, I'll buy it for my Xbox, kind of. Right, yeah. I'm like, I, think... what was I got most of the games. I think uh, 16 was the only game I didn't have. Like, after, like, I, I think starting from, no. Starting from Shut Your Mouth, I have all of them, except the first, I might have the first SmackDown versus Raw now, but before I didn't have it. And then 2K16, I didn't have it. The rest, I have them. Yeah, I was thinking of like just buying some WWE games for my for my PS2. See, what, but I don't know how um 2010 is on PS2 because I know it was like pretty late into the console. Yeah, yeah, it's probably like a watered down version of the PS3. Because I know Xbox 2008 version. is like still somewhat like it's more like two like two the 2008 gameplay on PS2 is more like 2007 than it is like to the current con to to the games at the time. Yeah. 
So I'm like, that was like one reason why I'm more likely to play that one. Yeah. Yeah, because I definitely don't want to play a watered down one. I think I personally think on the PS2, the last WWE game was probably 2007. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, they had it on. They had it on 360. But, but it was have it on yeah, it was on 360, but it just like enhanced the graphics. It was still the same gameplay though. Yeah, it was still the same. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it was like at that time people still had a PS2, so people probably got it on PS2 more than Xbox. Yeah, I feel like 360, like it came out pretty early, right? Like it came out like a year before PS3 did. Yeah, because there, there was no um, there were, I don't think there was a P there were a PS3, there was a PS3 like version planned, but it got canned. Oh, okay. So that's why 2008 was like the first introduction to to that console. While okay. 360 came out 360 came out like a year before PS3, so I think the game came out at the time of the PS2. Right, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Right. So yeah, I just like I'm like always like debating like okay, I want a roster where it's like I want to play as the wrestlers I grew up with, kind of. Yeah, so same. So it's like 2005, 2006. I wish there was a game that I was able to get all of them. I think the closest so far for me is 2- 2K19. Mm-hmm. It, it just doesn't have the arcade feel of it, so but I'll take it. Yeah, like it's still pretty good. Um, not I, bad. I think the closest for now is um, 2K19. No, 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 not 2K19. Um, WrestleMania 8, 19. Uh, what's that on on uh, GameCube? That was on GameCube. That was the GameCube version of Here Comes the Pain. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I had like it had that roster on there. It was a pretty good stock stacked roster. It had like Hulk Hogan, Goldberg, uh, Brock Lesnar, Stone Cold, Rock, Ray, Cena, Guerrero, Angle, like er- almost all the big hitters right there. Even Rikishi, Undertaker, Kane. Right. Yeah. So I, I, it was like a huge. St- it was a stacked roster. I think there was maybe like three four jobbers and that was it uh-huh yeah i think that's cool yeah and i was like oh man this is a pretty good and like i found out the only cut character that was that was cut was uh jeff hardy yeah he was also supposed to be in here comes the pain they took him off yeah and i was like we were this close for perfection (laughs) everybody i grew up with was in that game but jeff hardy yeah it's because he went to tna and then they just took him off the game i guess yeah yeah. oh my gosh but i was just like i was like this is a fun game i definitely i like i love the gamecube like wwe games from back in the day they were like super fun especially but it's one of those games where it's like you definitely need four players compared Mm -hmm. to the ps2 version yeah like with the ps2 version okay cool you got the the six players you get you can play with just one guy and you'll be good Another player, yeah. but like the GameCube is like you definitely want to party up and get like three extra people to play with you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I never like I, I do have a GameCube, but I didn't like really have like I didn't have it at that time, so I didn't get to play those games as much. Only when like I ever came over to someone's house or something. I don't know if I played WrestleMania 19. Day of Reckoning for sure. There, I think feel I think a lot of people remember at least the first Day of Reckoning game more than like any of the other. There was only four WWE games, so but Day of Reckoning was like the popular one. Yeah, that one came out like when the first SmackDown versus Raw came out, so I think that's why people got remember that one more. Yeah, and the roster, yeah, I remember it was like the it was like the beginning of the Ruthless Aggression era roster, so it's like you had Rock, Cena, Batista, Triple H, Rey Mysterio. And it was like more, it was more enhanced kind of deal. Like you ever played No Mercy? Uh, a little bit. Not on the actual system, but I played it on like an, an emulator. So I, I guess the gameplay is supposed to resemble that kind of gameplay. So that's why it got oh, more okay. popular. That, that's why people liked it more. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I like, I did watch like a summary. Like, so the first two games were WrestleMania 18 and 19. Apparently, I, I played 18 back in the day. I did not, the like, roster was okay. It was like that Verge where it was like, we were getting rid like, of uh, added... WCW people. Yeah, it was like when we got the NWO and that. Yeah. It, the roster was okay. It was just like the gameplay was just really bad. <laughs> 19, it did way better. I, I think the ones made 19 stand out. There was like game modes where you could like fight on a construction site or a, or a harbor or, or, or a mall or a parking lot. And just be yeah, the crap out of each the other. Yeah. yeah. So that's what stands out. Um, 
Day of Reckoning definitely went m- more like old school style, but with a little bit more realism. Yeah. And, but it still gave off that arcade feeling. And, right. And Day of Reckoning 2, it was basically the same as the first one, just with the stamina meter and trying to make it more realism, but it was still a fun game. Yeah. Cool, yeah. I hope, like, I actually, like, I kind of want to check those games out now. Too. I don't, I feel like I have Day of Reckoning, I just don't remember. You can probably but, find them, I yeah. think when it comes to GameCube games, you can find them. They're pretty, like, the cheap ones, because they're considered sports games. Yeah. Like, I don't, I have, um, like, one of those retro games stored near my house. So maybe I can check there. Yeah, I, I think I got I think I got the first day of reckoning online. I think I got it off of Macari for like fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. And it was and it was like brand new, like they haven't used it much. Like I'm like, alright, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm cool with this, I'm cool. I'm definitely down for this. Ah oh, man, like I I would definitely kill for an old school like WWE game like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so have you played um uh Battlegrounds? Uh, I want to, but I've been told it's pretty. It's one of those pretty grindy games. Oh, okay, yeah, I haven't, I haven't played it either. Like I want, uh, it's one of those games I want to play, but it's. I also heard it's like one of those games like, you. It's almost like if you want to unlock characters, you either grind or use microtransactions. Oh, it's one of those. Okay, I see. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like I'll wait for a price. I saw that it went on sale for a bit. But I was yeah. like, I don't know. I don't want to, like... If I want to play a wrestling game and I want to unlock characters, I want to do it through a story mode or through, like, doing a- achievements or missions. I don't want to grind and get coins, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like I wonder all... when, like, the next real, like, WWE game is going to be, though. Because have you seen, like, there's, like, there's an AEW game from, like, the same people that used to make the... WWE games. Yeah, it's I saw coming. that. I don't know what year. I don't know what year though. I think it, I think the game will probably come out next year. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think WWE games are going to be the same as they used to be. Like, I yeah, I, I just don't know because. Yeah, I don't know, but like it was pretty bad towards the end. So. With yeah. contracts and all that being lost, and like wrestlers going to different com- companies, it's just like. I don't think we're gonna get a good WWE game with a good, really good roster. I'm okay with the rosters. It's like I just want like good gameplay because like most most of the people like if they're missing like people just make them online anyway. Just I just right. download them. I, that's so why that's I did, not a big deal. Yeah, that's why I did with 19. Is like I downloaded like guys that look like Hulk Hogan, CM Punk, um, yeah. Rob Van Dam, JBL, even Chris Benoit. So I'm like, all right, I'm cool with this. Like I'll, I'll keep them. It, it just feels weird when I'm playing entrances. And they, yeah, their theme is not their theme song, and I'm just like, I know on PS3 you could you could put like the actual song. I don't know why they like they. I guess it's like a maybe like a copyright issue. Yeah, they like, did. They, they did it anymore. with um. They did it with uh 360 also, but I think it was only for local play. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not online. Well, like there's a way to do it on. There was a way to do it on PS4. Like if you if you had like a USB or something, you can just play their entrance music. Yeah, I saw I saw like the PC versions. You're able to like download mods where it's just they're just like adding the the characters from previous games that got cut just into the same game. Right, yeah. And it has the right uh like Titan Trons and everything. Yeah, Titan Trons and everything on the music and it's like the actual model. I'm like I would like if I was if I was like invested in PC gaming, I definitely would have done the same thing. Yeah. So I was like, uh cuz like okay, what I like about 2K19 is like okay, you're for me personally, they're just missing CM Punk, JBL, Rob Van Dam, um, Hulk Hogan, and Mankind. Like everyone else, like I can understand Benoit. I can understand um, who else am we forgetting? Like I could care less about Mark Henry and, probably, yeah. <laughs> and like the Great Kali. Maybe I, right. I would have loved to see John, them bring back John Morrison also. And, and Tommy Dreamer. I think, he, yeah, John Morrison probably came back too late. Like he'll probably be in the next one. Yeah. So I'm like, I would have loved to see those, at least some of those guys, like, make it in 2K19. Like, I was even, yeah. like, having a suggestion, like, that DLC pack they had in 2- 2K20, I wouldn't... Yeah. I was, like, even, like, I even messaged 2K, I'm like, hey, I'm just saying, I, I would pay if, like, you guys were able to use this on uh, 2K19. Like, I want to play Hulk Hogan. I'll, if I have to pay for it, I'll do it. Is he not in the game? I thought he was in the game. He's only in 2K20. Oh, okay, 2K20, he's in it. Yeah, so, okay, get this. 
He was in 2K15 as DLC, but they, yeah. they removed the yeah. DLC. Yeah. And then Why they... would they remove the DLC? What was that? Why would they remove the DLC? Like, you can't download it anymore? Like, at the time, you couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't download the DLC uh, anymore. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, did you hear about that fiasco? No, but they're like, why would they do that? Okay, so... They did that because um, they actually fired him from WWE at the time. Oh, okay, okay. Like, I thought it was a game-related thing. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, the whole, like, racist thing, right? Yeah, it was the whole racist thing. I, I, like, yeah, it was the whole racist thing and all that. So, like... They, they, yeah, they did because like it, it came out at the time when they were promoting the game for the Hulk Hogan edition, so they ended up just cutting that off. Oh, <laughs> but you were still able to download them through the Ultimate Warrior DLC pack. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like like, like you were able to play around. as '80s Hulk Hogan, but if you wanted to play as Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you couldn't. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah, and I, oh my god, like thank God for the character customizations in these games because I created so many Rey Mysterios. Yeah. And people are really good online. Like, it's, like, really accurate, too. Right? Like, like so that's the cool thing I like about, like, having Rey Mysterio in the game. It's like, okay, I can customize him. As, like, and most of, like, I mostly edit them based off, like, the, him on previous games I played. Or, like, the shows yeah. I remember him playing. Like, I remember watching a pay-per- pay-per-view I went to. I yeah. honestly missed the Rey Mysterio fight because, like, we showed up a bit late. But uh, I yeah. remember the mat, like the gear he was wearing. It was like a black and gray, like half one side was black and one side was like silver. Yeah. So like. Okay. So I ended up downloading that attire on on the game. Yeah. And I used it, and I used like some like he what he won he wore at WrestleMania, or some of the ones from like Here Comes the Pain and two that like SmackDown vs Raw games and all that. So I was just like, okay, I could see this. I could do, I could do this. Yeah, it's cool that we get to download attires. Because I remember, like, back then, the old games, you're stuck with, like, one attire. One Maybe attire. if you look two. I didn't mind, like, I didn't mind some of the attires through most of the wrestlers. It was just Rey Mysterio. It's like, I don't want to be playing one color. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because he has, like, a different color, like, every week. Like, some people, like, they ha- kind of have, like, a only, like, a handful. But his was, like, different every time. Right, like, he, he, like, like, okay, Cena just wears, like, the same shorts every now and then. Every now and then he'll change colors, but it's whatever. Um, yeah, like, he'll just have, like, the wrong t-shirt, which is, like, not a big deal. Yeah, Eddie, same. Uh, Kurt Angle, his, his spandex are usually different colors, but it's whatever. It's still mm-hmm. Kurt Angle. But Rey Mysterio's like, dude, th- this guy, like, fl- he's, like, the flashing thing. Like, like he, he, he stands out, kind of. Like, you want him to stand out. Yeah, I think AJ's kind of like that too. Like he, his attire changes pretty, pretty often. Yeah, I didn't honestly like his attire in Two K Twenty. What? Which one did they use? Was it the green one? It was like black with neon green. Okay, yeah, yeah. I call that the the Xbox attire. The Xbox attire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I like his white attire from Two K Eighteen. Yeah, it, that, that, that one's cool. And his and his um, his nineteen attire was pretty good too. Oh, uh, which one was it? Uh, it? It was thick. It was almost like the Xbox one, except instead of neon, it was just light blue. Oh, it's blue. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was that. like black and with light blue, but it actually looked good on him. And I yeah. think the first one was his Royal Rumble debut outfit. Yeah, the one with like the big one on it. The big one, and it's all blue. Yeah. 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 So, so those were like, all right, that's cool. Yeah, I, I like his uh, New Japan attires too, like the Bullet Club ones. People, people made them. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And I'm like, that's so freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think like, that's the thing. Okay, so, like, one thing I miss in the old school games were the GM mode. Right, right. Yeah, we don't have that anymore. So, I'm like, I, I decided to create it. Like, the, I, I decided to check out the universe mode. So, I did, I did that, but I just put all the Ruthless Aggression guys in it as my main roster. Mm-hmm. And I just added AJ there. Uh, how'd you, oh, you made you made him. No, no, he's uh, since he's already in the game. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just when you do universe mode, you can add your shows and what characters you want in the shows. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about my GM. Okay. Nah, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, I, like I have all the guys from 2003 to 2006 on there, and I'm like, ah, yeah, AJ deserves to be in this. Like, he definitely. Yeah, I, I like playing universe too. It's cool. Do you feel like his his um 
his career would have been successful if he actually started around the same time, like in the ruthless aggression era. I think it's better that he, he's in it now compared. I don't know, like if it was, if he was, if he would have, like if he would have made it, basically, been like as appreciated back then. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's how I feel like. Cause like I feel yeah, like I think like after after like the CM Punk thing like after that like I think people like really started getting into like like more indie kind of people you know right yeah honestly my one of my WrestleMania dream matches is literally uh AJ Styles versus CM Punk yeah same that would that would have been amazing like especially if it was like like two thousand like twelve or something like that like okay so uh, yeah or or like say if he does CM Punk does do a comeback like this is how I wanted to see. AJ Styles is WWE champion, like heading to WrestleMania. Right. And say the Royal Rumble, CM Punk makes a comeback, and he wins the yeah. Royal, he wins the Rumble. They right. start this whole feud where it's like, where it's like AJ is like, oh, you're just a quitter. You quit like everybody else and all that. You and you yeah. now you want your WrestleMania moments. It's like you know how AJ does his good mic skills and shit. Yeah. So yeah. he he does something like that, and Punk's like, "Well, yeah, you're you're the guy who had it easy. You, you made a name for yourself, and now you're here, and you're just another, you're just another Cena to me, kind of deal." Yeah, but who would be the who would be the face and the heel? I say AJ the heel and CM Punk the face. Yeah. And, like, I, I kind of want to add Cena involved just to have them go against each other. Make it a triple mm-hmm. threat. They should have made it a triple threat between Rock, Cena, and Punk. It would have been interesting to see that. For what? It was 29, right? WrestleMania 29? I think so. Yeah, yeah, because 28 was the first Rock and Cena. Yeah. And say, yeah, yeah say Cena decides to win a contenders match also and he wants in on this. And that it makes it more. I don't know if he's ever gonna be like a thing though, like ever be in like the title picture again. Maybe maybe like when he's like gonna retire for good, they'll give him like one last kind of run. Cena. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I personally think he's gonna make at least one more debut just to just to break the the Ric Flair record. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. They'll they'll probably have him win it like WrestleMania or something, and then then he loses it like the following day or something. Yeah, or or he just loses it that night. <laughs> Same, but um, the, yeah, he just like wins and then drops it. Yeah, but let, like just put it this way, he's trying to like add. Yeah, he adds himself to that match so because so he could break the record. So yeah. it involves a triple threat. So it's Styles yeah. versus Punk versus Cena, and yeah, that's our main event. They do one hell of a match, but Punk gets the win. Yeah, he gets his WrestleMania. He, he deserves moment. the win. He gets the moment, and like, boom! That's how you build Punk back up. Yeah, and that's how you make him the face. I don't know if he's ever gonna come back though. I I wish he would. But he, I, I mean, I feel would. like they're slowly introducing him back in, especially with those like WWE segments on Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Like it feels. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. He sounds like he's more comfortable. But it's more like, all right, like we're just waiting for him to say, "Yeah, I'm ready to go back." Right? Yeah. It just sucks like, that he like that he left like the at that time that he did. Like, I don't, I don't blame him for leaving. Like, I was on, I'm on his side. But... Oh yeah, I definitely, I definitely am yeah. on his side. You know, like that's the yeah. thing I heard about like his good title reign and all that. Like in the early 2010s, yeah. I'm like, yeah. dang, I miss a good part of WWE. <laughs> I heard like, yeah, that was a good time. But like even then, like when he was a champion, like he was never like really on the main event and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I give yeah. him props that they gave him at least an Undertaker fight. Yeah. At Mania. That, that was Undertaker's last good match. You think you think people would have accepted it if Punk got the streak? I think they would it would have been better than Brock Lesnar. Yeah. True. I the, the either him or Styles I would have like been okay with. Yeah, because that makes sense because it's kind of like putting over someone that, that could like carry the company. Yeah, right. It's like you like I I, I saw an interview that Undertaker like really wanted Roman Reigns to do it, but yeah. I was like, mm, I mean, people didn't already like him when he beat him at WrestleMania, so yeah. 
Like, if it was someone like AJ or Punk, it would have gave them that good push over, like, that push. Yeah. It would have been better than Roman beating him. Because, like, Roman beating him is more, like, it's, like, expected. Like, you, okay, you already know who's going to win it. Yeah. Like, but, if it, but like, yeah, like, with AJ would have, like, if they had AJ put him down as his, like, last match. Like, if AJ beat him, say this is, like, at a live show. Live yeah. at WrestleMania. We still, without COVID and all that. Yeah. It definitely would have, like, gotten way more pumped. Like. Yeah, I don't think people would have been, like, mad about it. Nah. Because, like, yeah. the thing is, everybody respects AJ more than, like, Roman. I hate that. And like, Ro don't get me wrong. Yeah. Roman is, like, I'm glad they're making him a heel. Like, that's a good way. That's a good step. And I'm yeah. pretty sure, like, okay, don't get me wrong. Like, he's, I'm pretty sure he's a cool guy and all that. It's just, yeah. he's, at, he's at a bad spot where he's being pushed where he's not belonged. Yeah, it, it's more like the company's fault than his. Yeah, it's not his fault. It's the company just yeah. trying to push, like, I definitely don't see this guy as, like, the face of WWE. Like, honestly, I think I see Becky Lynch as more as the face right now than Roman. Yeah, yeah. When when she comes back, like, if she comes back, I guess. Like, I'm pretty I, sure she's coming Like, I can see her as the next John Cena. Maybe, yeah. I, like, for sure, like, she was the biggest person, like, last year. Oh, yeah. I mean... Or, like, she, this, just the past, like, year or whatever. Like, give it a shout-out. Like, her. she's, like, the first chick to be on the cover of a wrestling game not sexualized. Right, yeah. Like... And then, um... Uh, I think, like, you know, like, with the, the whole Roman thing, like, they should have pushed Daniel Bryan. You know, that's that's why people got mad. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I see that. Yeah, I definitely see that. Um, I mean, like, yeah, I know, I know Daniel Bryan's pretty good now, but it's like it's not. He's not at that top anymore. Like, how the yeah, he's not like uh, he he doesn't have that like momentum like that he had like back in like twenty fourteen or whatever. Right, it's like it's not that. Cause like I remember the Cena momentum back in the day, and that went on for like a good two three years at least before like they started pushing more people. Yeah. So like. I, I, didn't, I didn't like it when it was just John Cena burying everybody, you know? <laughs> Back in the day? Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, like, at the time, like, growing up, it was like, oh, yeah, you want John Cena to win, because, like, that's when he was still in this economic stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was after, like, WrestleMania 23, I was like, okay, I'm over the Cena taking over. Everybody. Yeah, he was, he, he got overpowered. Yeah, he got overpowered. It's like, okay, cool, he beat Triple H. Cool, he beat Shawn Michaels. All right, now it's like, now you're having him win every match, kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really until, like, like Punk came, and, then, like, when he had, like, his push, that, like, things got, like, kind of interesting again. Because I know, like, for a while, it was, like, Randy Orton versus John Cena every, like, pay-per-view, you know? Right. Yeah. You know what? It was funny, because, like, I wanted that rivalry to happen when I was a kid. It was like, oh, Randy Orton is, like, the Raw guy, Cena is the SmackDown, then they slap shows and i'm like damn we're never gonna see this feud and it wasn't yeah, until uh, after i stopped watching wrestling i was just like wow now they start to do it <laughs> right yeah i'm like these are the biggest ones i mean it was okay it was just like they like it just went on for a really long time oh man yeah okay like who should cena's last match be with uh, maybe like a like a younger guy maybe Unless they do, like, a two-legend thing. I, I don't know. Like, I want to see a legend thing. I could definitely see it with this whole Randy Orton segment. You know how he's, like, going after all the legends, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see I, him doing... I think Randy Orton would be an okay one. Like, it would be decent. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more acceptable. So, I, yeah. I, I could definitely see that where it's, like, Cena comes back and he's like, all right, you, had, you, you took him down enough legends. All right, now it's time to take me down if you can. And... Yeah. He ends up beating or Cena. Orton beats Cena and boom, that's his last WrestleMania match. Mm hmm God, Yeah. I I think that'd be like kinda okay. Or like or they just put like some like young up and coming guy. But I don't know who, who that would be. Ah, man. It, yeah, it's just interesting because it's like we only got like maybe like three, four guys left from the Ruthless Aggression era. Yeah. What it's what, Jeff Hardy, Randy and Ray. Uh, Ray. Yeah. And, like, Big Show if he counts. I think... I personally want to say Big Show's done. 
That's what I always say, but he, he somehow still comes back. But he only comes back for like a few weeks or so and then leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm. He should just retire. Yeah, with the big show, I'm like, okay, you're pretty much done. Like, you're, you're like, you'll, he's, you'll pop. He's been pretty much done. Yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll, like, you, yeah, you come back for every few matches, but like, for an official match, I think you're pretty much done. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I feel like with Jeff, Jeff will be an interesting one. Like, like, who would his last match be with? Yeah, that, that's a tough one, too. Like, the only one that... There's, like, there's nobody really there that he has, like, a connection with. Other than Matt. Yeah. Like, I feel like... Well, be... Matt's in AEW, though. Yeah, that's true. Like, if unless Matt were to come back to do a fight, it would be against yeah. Jeff for his last match. Yeah. Randy... I don't know, like... Again, it would be. I think he still has a a good while. To yeah, go he has a good while. Cars. But if we were to get his match, I, yeah, that, that's a tough I, one. I uh, like, if we're going with with another legend, definitely probably Cena. But yeah, I could all that would make the most sense. I could also see. Uh, I could also see AJ. Yeah, AJ yeah. or someone else that takes on like. That legend killer role. I feel like even AJ is gonna be done like not too long from now. Yeah, I heard I heard something. He wants to retire if like this whole pandemic continues or something like that. Yeah, because he's like he's like old too. Yeah, he's like in, like, in his early forties. Yeah. I, I did you hear about that one rumor where it's like where it, where like Triple H says his last match might be with AJ. Oh, no, I haven't heard that. Yeah, there was, like, a rumor going around, like, next WrestleMania, um, AJ was, like, gonna be... Basically basically gonna be, like, his final fight. For both of them? Or just For Triple, Triple H. H? Okay. And, uh, and, like, I was just thinking about it, I'm like, might as well just have AJ put down every guy before retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well, since you're, like, having him go against all these iconic, like, guys that we grew up with. So, uh, like, that's what I wanted to see anyways. Yeah. I do I do want to see, though, a really good uh, AJ and Rey Mysterio rivalry. That would be good. That would be I would definitely like, want to see good. that. Without, like, I know they already fought in the WWE ring, but I don't really don't count that because there were so many people interfering with those matches. Yeah. Like, a real feud. I want a real feud. Like, that would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, who would you think Ray's last match will be with? I like some like Mexican guy. <laughs> I feel like they they've been having them fight all these like like the mass wrestlers they have there, the luchadors. Yeah. But yeah. They yeah. don't live to the hype as Ray. That's the thing. Yeah. They, yeah. I know. But th that's probably what I don't know. Like maybe it could they could use their rub or something. I don't know. I don't like they tried to push Kalisto, but it didn't go anywhere. Sink, sink. Yeah, like I wouldn't say those guys. I would say like, like one, like maybe like Andrade or something. But no, like even that. I, don't I know. think I think yeah. if anything, it's more likely like his last match will probably be with Dominic. <laughs> that would, okay. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. That would make the most sense. Actually, I think that would more likely happen. And if it's say if it's like at a WrestleMania. Yeah. Dominic gets the win. Like, it's really hard to see Rey Mysterio go a full like heel turn. That's the thing. Has he ever been a heel? No. <laughs> That's the yeah. Thing. It's but yeah. it's really hard to see him as that heel turn because just how his character is. He... Maybe like Dominic's the heel. <sighs> yeah, I can see Dominic more as the heel. Like, like he's li he's tired of living under his dad's shadow and all that, and he wants to prove yeah. that he's better than Ray. So they do a feud at WrestleMania <laughs> and all that, and yeah. Dominic beats Ray, but at the end. They shake hands. Rey Mysterio passes the mask down to him. Now Dominic wears the mask. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I can see something like that. Yeah, it's really hard to see uh, Rey as a heel. Like, he, yeah. he has too much heart in him with this character. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't think he... Yeah, that, I don't think that would work. Nah. <laughs> like, seeing... Re I remember it was... It, it was... Uh, I think it was Dan Reckoning 2 and SmackDown vs. Raw 2007... They made Ray yeah. like in the in the story mode. They made Ray a heel, and I'm like, oh, okay. it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, like okay, like it, like uh, I'm not sure if you played 2007, but there's a there's a segment where you're feuding against the Undertaker, and mm. Ray is like your best friend at the time, 
and he wants a yeah. title shot too, but he's a cruiserweight, he's the cruiserweight champion. So they yeah. keep telling him no. So he ends up turning against you, and he's like, "I want to, I want that fight title." Uh, I don't remember that. I, I did play 2007 though. I did have it. Yeah, and it's just been such a long time. And he's like, "I want that ti- I want that cruiserweight title fight." And <laughs> like, he's like, "I want that world title fight." And uh, then like, it was like, "Oh my god, Ray just turned heel on me." <laughs> Oh yeah. Like I maybe maybe I can replay it eventually. Like I I can see Cena more turning heel than Ray. Yeah, that would be more believable. I do remember though that one that that fight they had where Ray Mysterio did win the WWE Championship and he lost it the same night to Cena. Oh yeah, that's when CM Punk came back. Right? Yeah, I was just like, wow, that was like <laughs> such a disappointment. So the, that, that was kind of waste. Does that do, like? But apparently they count it as a title reign, so I'm like, okay. It, it does count, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. But I would love to see him have at least hold the WWE title one more time before he retires. Yeah, he definitely re- re- deserves that. Oh man, I think so too. Like, where do where do you actually see WWE going? Like, in the next few years? Yeah, especially... or like who like. Oh, Especially know. with this pandemic and like them losing wrestlers, it it is kind of weird. Like like watching it without a without an audience. Yeah, it just feels weird. Watch eventually. I think they'll be okay. Why? Well, I I, I can guarantee you they'll start doing stuff like that for concerts. Maybe yeah, like like the whole like virtual thing. Yeah, like there there's a stage, but everyone else is like. It's like a screen. It's like a screen and all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they're gonna put their lighters up and all that. Yeah. Um, going back to the music thing, um, with, with like everything, like all this crazy stuff happening this year, especially in the pop punk community with like all these allegations and all that, how do you see pop yeah. punk's future? Uh, well, what was the, what was the allegations? It was like a lot of bands getting called out for like sexual assault and like, well, like they like little girls and stuff. Yeah. And all that. And then like that, that's literally setting like a whole bad image to the scene right now. I feel like that always happens. It always happens. I mean, I feel like everywhere you go, but I know it's like in the pop punk scene, it's like has really taken a toll, especially yeah. with Warped Tour being dead and all that. Like, I know the main reasons Warped Tour closed down was because of all that. Yeah. So it's just like. Oh really? I didn't know. That. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it turned out it, it turned like what I was told because like um, one of my buddies, he's like the producer for State Champs. Yeah. And he literally told me, like, the whole reason, like, I was, that he told me was, like, was because of the whole allegations that were going on because of that, like, bands sleeping with underage chicks at Warped Tour a lot. And the last straw was Whoa. Mike Fuentes. Who's he from? Uh, Pierce the Veil? Pierce the Veil. And um, uh, that was basically the straw that broke the camel's back. And they'd rather, yeah, instead of dealing with the lawsuits, they just literally just stopped Warped Tour because of it. Oh, uh, so like yeah, I don't know like why that's the thing like like keeps happening with like pop punk bands where they're like like little girls or something. Uh, but like, I'm sure that happens everywhere. But yeah, it, yeah, it happens everywhere. But like it definitely happened a lot with the pop punk scene. Yeah, well, I don't know where he's gonna go. Like I feel like it's not as popular as it was like a couple years oh, ago. Yeah. Like I feel like 2015 it was kind of popping, wasn't it? They tried to like oh, there were there were a few bands. Like honestly, I think. When it comes to pop punk bands, State Champs is like that only band that I feel like is like still has that old school pop punk vibe. Right. Yeah, like State Champs is probably my my favorite too, like of like the newer like generation. Right. Like they're yeah. they're pretty good like c- compared to all the bands I've seen and it's like they know how to keep that going, but like every other band is like I I just they're it's like we're not going to get another Newfound Glory simple plan all-time low right and, all that. and i get it there's gonna be a point where it's like most of these bands just don't want to play pop punk music anymore yeah they don't want to be like 40 year olds and all that i mean blink is understandable because right. they're like they're 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 like past mainstream right like yeah like they don't really count they don't count green day kind of like changed their genre years ago so it's like that's a whole another story like but those two bands are like yeah. The, they, they, they've already like cemented their place yeah they, so it doesn't really like matter for them anymore like yeah and like you got artists like fallout boy with um which uh, like they're they went mainstream pop same with panic at the disco all-time lows i respect all-time low that they're changing their genre style a bit 
Right. Like, like they, they're they still, like, pop punk, but they know how to keep it pop mainstream. Like, you could tell it got matured yeah. over the years. Was, yeah. I love All Time Low. Like, All Time Low is, like, actually, um, you know how, like, there's, like, that whole, like, Spotify rap thing yeah. that's going on? Yeah, like, so this is, like, the third year that I've had, like, All Time Low, like, in a row, like, they've been my number one artist. So. That's funny. Yeah. It, lately, it's been Simple Plan for me. <laughs> Yeah, but all time low has been in my top five. Okay, my top five are like every year. Dude, there's only been one change so far for me, but lately oh, okay. it's been all time low. No, simple plan, all time low, newfound glory, and Green Day. It used to be Blink, right. but I like this year I got into uh, Nate wants the battle. Have you heard of his music on YouTube? Uh, he's the guy that does like the like the anime theme songs yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, and like I listened mostly to his pop punk covers and all that. So I was like, yeah. all right, I'll, like, it, it ended up getting catchy. Like, some of his stuffs are pretty good. So, like, it became, mm-hmm. his his thing became, like, my number one <laughs> played on Spotify. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll allow that. But mostly it's always been Simple Plan. Yeah, like, for this year, mine is, okay, so number one was All Time Low. Two was Taylor Swift. Three was Green Day. Four was Blackpink. Do you know them? Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, and then five was uh, Paramore. That was my top five. It's been a long minute since like I listened to Paramore. Like I'm not the biggest fan of them. I think I listened to like yeah. maybe like four or five songs. But oh, okay, yeah. I I never really got like that much behind them, but I know they're pretty good. Yeah, like a few years ago, like I was really really into them. Like I still am, but like they were pretty big influence on like the last um like album that we had. I, I think say. I think I like I think I guess I can see that I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, probably them and All Time Low. Yeah, I, I know some of your guys' music. Like, you definitely have, like, that style, especially Green Day style. Yeah, like, I think, like, the Green Day style is more, like, the older stuff that we had. I think the, the newer stuff is not really as much. Um, I did a I did a review album. I did a review episode for their last album. What would you think of it? I, I haven't gotten to listen to it that many times. I, it was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't like the other albums. Honestly, but it was okay. Man, honestly, like between 2010 and 20, it's like yeah. the Green Day albums on there were just like they they just didn't hit like like the last ones did. I actually really like the trilogy. Like I listened to the trilogy. The a trilogy lot. was actually pretty good. There's some bangers I I have listen I yeah. like on there. There there was a website I saw like someone like kind of crammed like the best songs onto oh into like one into one and i'm like okay i okay. see it i see it. i can definitely see it like, yeah i think out of all of them like i listen to uno more but i do like some of the bangers on trey yeah, yeah i think uh uno's same for me is the one i listen to the most i think in general just like the trilogy is like like even though it's not that serious but like it's fun to listen to yeah i, I definitely yeah. i definitely get to that um revolution radio was pretty it definitely felt like a like another American Idiot style type album, but right. It had it had some pretty good songs. It had some pretty good songs. I definitely love Still Breathing. That was probably one of my favorites. Like I think it's the one I listened to the most on that album. I think so. Me too. And um, Forever Now is pretty good too. Forever Now is pretty good. Young Blood, um, Father of All. It yeah. I there's probably like one or two songs I actually listened to on that one, and everything else is just like yeah. I feel like it's forgettable. <laughs> yeah yeah i, I kind of feel the same way and like like it's just like okay yeah and when i heard some of the songs live i'm just like it doesn't sound the same yeah but like people were saying like that's like a troll album or something they, that's what they're saying too like yeah that's cool it's a troll album but i'm like ah uh, i just I like i just don't see myself listening to this album more than the other albums yeah they're definitely capable of doing better like yeah I mean, I do that with some bands already. Like, I think I listen to Nine more off from Link more than California. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah, like, I don't li- really listen to, like, the new Blink stuff. I actually li- like, I, like, I love Tom. So, like, just, like, listening to, like... Like, I listen to Angels and Airwaves more than, than Blink. I, yeah. I, like, I like... I do like the California album in Nine. They, like, to me, I know it's not Blink-22, but it feels like something else. But it's still good. It's like still okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I and like the thing is, Matt tries so hard to sound like Tom sometimes. 
I think I listened to nine maybe like once, like once all the way through, and that's it. I seen, but I seen, uh, I seen Blink live twice. One with Tom and one with Matt, and Matt right. tries so hard to sound like Tom. Like I swear. Oh really? Yeah, and I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> yeah, man, I I don't want to watch that, bro. Like that's why, I, like, I the last time they came here, like I didn't even bother. Like I didn't even bother buying a ticket. <laughs> I know. Because I honestly, like, for a long time, like, like I love, like, for example, like, I like Green Day, All Time Low, Paramore, all that. But, like, I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of Blink-182. Like, I was a fan, but I wasn't, like, a super fan, Yeah, you know? Because, like, their music was, like, it was really fun, like, in the moment, but, like, it didn't really, like, resonate with me as much as, like, the other, like, more serious stuff. Like, for example, like, when you listen to, like, American Idiot, like, that shit's, like, fire, you know? Dude, it's still fire to this <laughs> like, day yeah yeah like it's like it's an emotional like kind of album which is like what i'm looking for and then like uh for blink like i just didn't feel that as much (sighs) but um recently like since like last year i started listening to like angels and airways more and like bro like that shit is amazing especially the first album man dude just when green day plays the american idiot album live it's just so like it just hits you dude it's so good yeah it's so good like I think I saw the first time I saw them, it was like during their 21st Century Breakdown tour. Yeah. They literally played 90% of, of, of American Idiot. Right. And I was just like, wow, man. Like, it feels way cool. Like, it, I love it. I definitely love it. But even 21st Century Breakdown is really good, too. 21st though. Century Breakdown is a good album, too. I Yeah. I know people started, like, hating on it because that's when, like, they did their comeback. But if uh, people said it felt mainstream, but I'm like, it still feels yeah. Green Day-ish. Yeah, it's definitely Green, green Day still. Yeah, it definitely is and stuff. Um, but yeah, like the Trilogy album and like everything else forward to that, it was like, it just didn't have that vibe. Like, like it's still listenable. Like, I'll still listen to it, but it just didn't have like that vibe when you listen to it live. Right, yeah. Did you ever... Uh... Look, I'm, I'm... Sorry? No, go on, go on. Yeah, I, I was just going to say like, um like i still like the trilogy and stuff like i think if they did like a rock offer every time they would get kind of old so yeah I- i'm not i'm not hating on the like the direction that they took did you ever play the video game uh the rock band video game yeah. with green day yeah the green day rock band uh no not really oh my God. <laughs> it was like okay like I, I, th- I talked to another guy on here on the, one of my friends josh i think i think it was josh yeah. but um uh, so like I was explaining to him like, okay, so I I bought that game day one like when they had, I was a huge Green Day fan obviously I loved the Rock Band yeah. and when I saw they were doing a Rock Band game I was like I have to buy this <laughs> right I have to buy this Green Day game like or else I'll never or else I'll never live live fully expectations and all that so I'm like right. I bought the game. I bought it on 360. I had a I, most of my rock band stuff was on Wii, but I wanted to play mm. it on 360 because because I wanted to play that game in the full HD. I want to see how they look and all that. Yeah. And oh my god, it was amazing. But the track list was so weird. Like, like was it missing a lot of stuff? Okay, so you have you played the Beatles rock band? That one I played, but like I didn't have it, but I played it. Okay, did you ever play the story mode? Uh, no, I just, I just played, like, arcade mode or whatever. Okay, so, you know, okay, so the story mode in the Beatles was, like, obviously they had, like, a few songs from each of their albums, but mm-hmm. there was multiple, like, venues you would play. So, like, the first album played at the warehouse they played at, and then at when, they, when you get to Abbey Road, you're in the studio. When you're playing another one, you're playing at, like, the the, the Yankee Stadium and, like, playing on a rooftop like there was multiple like there, there was basically multiple like s- venues you could play at depending on the song yeah. you played like sergeant yeah. sergeant pepper when you played the sergeant pepper album it was like it was like the animation they're performing but they're performing like in some kind of psychedelic kind of deal okay yeah for green day it was only three venues and three albums and like some hits from their other albums Okay. So, but it was like, it felt so weird. So, like, Dookie, it was like the yeah. whole Dookie album, but they were already, they were playing at um, the warehouse they started off at. 
Okay. Uh, like uh, Gilman? Yeah, the, like the... Okay. It, it was Gilman that we're playing at, but I'm like, they were pretty big when Dookie came out already. And they were like, I swear to God, they like got like casted out or something, right? They got like yeah. banned or something. Right, now they're welcome yeah. back, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, but, uh... But yeah, it was like, it was just weird, because I'm like, you should have at least had Woodstock for Dookie or something. Because I feel like... Yeah. 39 smooth and kerplunk should have been like the 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 gilman venue but at like wait they didn't have kerplunk they didn't have kerplunk yeah they didn't have kerplunk or 39 smooths because they weren't master tracks oh yeah that, that's what i was guessing too yeah they weren't master tracks so they couldn't do it um right and then they had a uh, milton keys for american native when they did the bullet in the bible yeah they had that venue they had the whole american idiot album with some <laughs> some hit like some hits like uh brain stew um hitching a ride good riddance minority warning um oh, okay like the singles from insomniac and nimrod and warning basically yeah and yeah and they just had them shoved tossed into the to the milton keys venue so like mm-hmm. the majority of the songs were at that venue and then you had a 21st century breakdown and mm-hmm. they it had like seventy percent of the album on the game. The rest you had to okay. download. Oh, it's like DLC. Yeah, so like the hits, like Twenty One Guns, Know Your Enemy, and all that, because they were yeah. already DLC before. Oh, and like the one of like the Rock Band games. Yeah, they were already DLC for one of the Rock Band games. So, so if you wanted to play those songs, you had to download them. Oh, okay. And it sucked if you had the Wii version too. So like oh did you did you have the Wii one or was it no but I one? okay so like on the X I had the Xbox version but um yeah but uh for the for the Xbox version all you had to do like if you didn't have the Rock Band game all you had yeah. all you had to do was um basically just go to the marketplace or if you had a PlayStation and the PSN store and just download the songs from there if you had the right. Wii version you needed Rock the Rock Band game to download the game the songs. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that's weird. Yeah, because like they didn't have much in their music in their DLC store market with the Wii shop, so it was just like you were screwed. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, uh, I actually ended up just buying Rock Band Four for my Xbox when I got my Xbox One. I'm just waiting for the guitar to show up, but uh, I I downloaded it right away because I, I guess yesterday was the last day you could transfer all your songs that you had on previous games. Okay. So I just downloaded the game and just transferred all the songs last minute. That's good. At least you got it in, in time. Oh, man. Yeah, so I'm like... I, 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 haven't played, I haven't played Rock Band in so long. Same. I like I wanted to play it for a while, but um, I just never bothered, like... I like I, want, I, I ended up migrating to... Moving from 360 to PlayStation. So I'm like... yeah. And I found out you couldn't really, like, transfer your songs over to the PlayStation version. So I'm like, all right. But until I got a... I recently just got an Xbox. And I was going to wait on getting Rock Band. I was like, all right. Yeah. I, could, I could, like, if I run into it, I'll get it. Then I saw, like, them post a notification. Like, hey, by December 1st, you can't transfer any more songs. I'm like, oh, shit. So I ended up just downloading yeah. it onto my Xbox and just downloading the songs. Why did they do that, though? Like, you can't... Uh, I think it's like just the line. licensing oh okay makes sense yeah so i'm like all right i'm like i have like literally like 500 dlc songs so i'm like okay i want to transfer i want to keep these just in case yeah that's crazy yeah so i'm like all right i'll just do that now i'm just i ordered like a guitar so i I managed to find a good one for like at least 120 so it should be coming by tomorrow or something is it like a, a strat uh yeah i think it's a strat yeah, because I know the the, the the newer versions were just strats. Yeah. And I don't, like, it's weird because, like, while I was looking it up. So if you had the PlayStation version of the game and, you, and yeah. you still had your PS3 ones, you can still use them Bluetooth wirelessly. Okay. But if you had the Xbox version, you had to buy this adapter that you connect to your Xbox and it links the 360 controller to it. Uh, Okay. So I was like, oh, dang. But I don't like I don't have a 360 controller anymore. So I was like, 
all right, I'll just might as well buy it. But yeah, they're so expensive now. I'm just like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know like people still play that. Um, actually, people still do. There's still DLC coming out for it. That's why I'm surprised about it. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like it because um, we call it. Yeah, a lot of people just didn't like the didn't like it at first when it first came out because yeah. They didn't have online mode or any story mode or right like versus mode. It was just just the solid yeah. game. And then they added right. an expansion pack where you're, if you already had the game, they would up you just pay like an extra twenty bucks and they'll upgrade it with all it and you get like a extra bonus songs. Or mm -hmm. but they ended up just releasing a retail version of the upgraded version also, like full on. So if it was oh, like okay. one or the other. Isn't there like a, a game now that's like with a real guitar? Guitar Smith, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you can use an actual guitar, you just gotta buy the adapter. Or you use the already, like, controller guitar they had. Oh, uh, okay. I thought it was that. I, I thought that was pretty I'm, I'm not, I'm not... Oh, what were you saying? Like, I thought it was a pretty unique way to do that, if you want to start learning guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw also, like, I, this is when Rock Band 3 came out. It was, like, the last Rock Band game on 360. That version yeah. came out with controllers where you could use an actual guitar. Okay. So that was pretty interesting, but that didn't last because they ended up removing it from the new one. They even had a yeah. keyboard that they ended up removing. So, like, what instruments can you play now? Is it, is it the same four as before? Yeah, the same four as before. Vocals now has harmonies. Ah. Uh... And stuff. So, yeah. And, like, what was weird is, like, for Rock Band 3, they really tried using keyboard a lot for certain songs. Yeah. And, um, but some songs didn't have guitar, so, like, you were able to use the keys on guitar. Oh, okay. So, example, yeah. um, you know the song Imagine by John Lennon? Yeah, so it's, like, all piano. It's all piano, so you couldn't yeah. use that. Uh, you had to play the piano version on, uh, on the rock band 3 version but on rock band 4 they edited it, they just moved the the key part to the guitar part oh <laughs> that's that funny i'm like all right that's pretty interesting <laughs> yeah and like for um bohemian rhapsody it was the same thing where it's like yeah there was a guitar part but you had to wait like halfway to the song to start playing it what they did was they merged the piano part with the guitar part Right, so you're basically playing the piano, but like on guitar. Yeah, and then and then you should continue. Then you start playing the guitar like halfway through. Okay, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Pop Punk Nerd Show where we usually talk about music, video games, movies, anything pop culture related. I'm a Pop Punk Nerd. This is my special guest, John from Minority Nine Hundred Five. Just want to say, th appreciate you ha being on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I definitely would love to have you on the show once again, probably for more segments. Yeah, for sure. Um, no problem with me. Yeah, man, dude. Like I'm, like I said, I was planning to do a WWE episode. I would be down to have you on that. Yeah, I'm down. All right, too. Um, ladies and gentlemen, before I, we go, any last words, John? Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for having me again on the podcast. Uh. If you guys are interested uh we have our youtube channel where we release our, our original music and also covers yes and um our new song dancing with you is coming out on december 18th all right guys you hear that first yeah. you could check out their channel down on the link below um ladies and gentlemen thanks for listening thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time on the pop-up nerd show take care guys <laughs>